everyone and welcome to Virginia International Raceway, America's motorsport resort. And it gets that name for a great reason. It's a beautiful setting in a wonderful part of the Virginia countryside, rolling hills, just a couple miles north of the North Carolina border. And Paul Newman called this place heaven on earth, as it's easy to see why. But don't forget, there is a 17 turn, 3.27 mile, undulating, tight, technical and fast old school road course here and this weekend the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship is taking it on. Our racing action would come from the Mazda MX-5 Cup, arguably, or perhaps inarguably, the greatest road racing on the entire North American continent at the moment. These lightweight, production-based cuties aren't the quickest of movers in a straight line, but they corner very well and therefore make for great go-kart style momentum-based racing. There's a distinct feel to the start of an MX-5 race. It's like you and your idiot friends have decided to go poking around a beehive. Then, right before the start, your melonhead friends knocks on the hive with a stick. And, well... Clearly, there was some great action in race one of the Mazda MX-5 Cup weekend, and there would certainly be plenty more to look forward to for race two on Sunday. It would not be long into the afternoon before Dad and I made the long trek up the hill to our car for a restocking of water and a well-deserved air conditioning break. While we were enjoying our reprieve, the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series began their first race of the weekend. It always feels really cool to sit in the middle of the track and hear the beautiful hum of the roaring V10s echo through the S's and on the back straightaway. But that's kind of boring. 
because if the Mazdas sound like a bunch of angry bees, well, the field of hurricanes is like a tribe of hornets. I love these new Evo versions of the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo. I've always loved the essence of these cars, but this version is just something else. It's stunningly beautiful, yet at the same time aggressive, and I'd imagine terrifying if you had one a little too close for comfort in the mirrors. These guys were fun to watch, and are always a joy to have on the schedule for IMSA at VIR. Moments later, it was time for IMSA qualifying, important for the drivers to set themselves up for a good run on Sunday, and a chance for the fans trackside to catch a brief glimpse of all the stars as they prepare for the main show the next day. At the end of the session, the number 23, Heart of Racing, Aston Martin Vantage took the GTD Pro qualifying honors in the hands of Ross Gunn, while Windward Racing with their number 57 Mercedes AMG took pole position in GTD under the guidance of Russell Ward. So then, immediately after WeatherTech qualifying wrapped up, Dad and I headed down to a very hot grid where the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge Fan Gridwalk was taking place. Although this series serves as support for the WeatherTech Championship, it's hard to go wrong with GT4 and TCR cars as they always put on a great multi-class show. In this race, we would be cheering on the number 8 McCann Racing Porsche Cayman GT4, where our good friend Andrew Davis would be driving. Teammate Michael McCann would be starting on the front row in second. And just like that, the grid was closed, and it was time for some Michelin Pilot Challenge racing action.
Oh no, no, no! It certainly wasn't the end of the race McCann Racing was hoping for. Still, despite this, the Michelin Pilot Challenge put on some incredible racing action. Furthermore, the race took place towards the end of the day, providing some great lighting for pictures. With that, Saturday's on-track action was finished, but more was to come on Sunday. In the morning, we were greeted with the beautiful melody of V8s as the LMP3 field of the IMSA Prototype Challenge roared around the track. After Prototype Challenge, we made our way over to the Turns 3, 4, and 5 complex once more, where we were treated to yet another spectacular MX-5 Cup race. This series never fails to amaze me. The Mazda race made us hungry for more racing action and some food. So Dad and I picnicked under the trees while the Lamborghini Huracans of the Super Trofeo series sang their sweet melody. After the Lamborghini race, it was time to say hello to the Michelin Man and head into the paddock for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Fan Gridwalk, an opportunity never to be passed up.
Soon, however, the grid was closed, and we made the sweaty hike up to turns four and five to catch the start of the weekend's main event. Some time into the race, Dad and I walked back to the car and grabbed our bikes. We decided to go check out the new Turn 1 and 2 camping slash viewing area.
For the end of the race, Dad and I headed to the outside of the snake to see the drivers wrestle their cars to the checkered flag. In the end, FAF Motorsports with their Porsche 911 GT3R were winners in the GTD Pro Field, pulling off an incredible fuel saving strategy to win, while the number 57 Winwood Racing Mercedes would go from pole to victory in the GTD class. Overall, through the heat of the weekend, IMSA and Virginia International Raceway put on yet another fantastic show. I was slightly concerned that the absence of GT Le Mans, leaving just a GTD field, would make the event feel less special, and I could not have been proven more wrong. There's just something about an IMSA race weekend, especially at a facility as beautiful and well-kept as VIR. I fully recommend that if you can make it out to the Michelin GT Challenge at VIR, or any other IMSA event, you should absolutely go. There's such a bright future ahead of this series, and it would be an absolute shame to miss it. With that, it is time to end. I hope you enjoyed a glimpse into what an IMSA race weekend at VIR feels like. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and live on. Peace.